Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Sunday night. Monday is upon us here tomorrow. About 10.05 p.m. California time here. October 6, 2024 is the date. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe. Let's go ahead and check this out here real quick, see what we have. It's been a pretty uh, busy day out here across the globe. Many areas seeing elevated earthquake activity. Uh, looks like a 1.0 there in the California, one of the latest quakes. Let's go ahead and check this out real quick, see what we got going on. Uh, Los Angeles specifically around this area is getting a bunch of earthquake activity on the uh, broad side of things here. Of course, we're starting that off with a, uh, a four-pointer this morning. Since then, got uh, a little swarm of activity around that area of the Fontana region. And in general, if you look at the, the area out here, it's increasing all across the Los Angeles area. Uh, latest quake here around Simi Valley, Chatsworth 1.1. Uh, so a lot of fault systems out here, various fault systems showing some elevated activity here in the last 24 hours and uh, even within the last hour out here, as you can see. So continue to watch that. Uh, the Puente Hills Thrust Fault here, seen a, a trail of earthquakes. Now this fault system here, it's not showing it on the map, but it's a blind thrust fault and it's capable of producing a 7.5 earthquake. Don't know when the last one was though. Happens every couple thousands of years. Obviously it hasn't happened recently. So uh, gotta keep an eye on that one. That goes directly underneath Los Angeles and towards the uh, Beverly Hills area. A couple of smaller earthquakes on that today. So overall pattern out here, ele well, elevated for sure in terms of earthquake activity, even around the Barstow area. Uh, and we're starting to get that similar pattern up here that stretches Southern California right here, and then right about the Garlock Fault Shear Zone, this mountain range, all the way eastward. You can follow a trail of activity here. Uh, and we, we had a couple of threes out in Nevada here today as well. Uh, so things are definitely on the uptick out here. I'm waiting for some further elevated activity in this area of Nevada um, to go along with the uh, movement we're seeing there in Southern California, similar to the pattern that we've seen here last month. Movement up north of Lake Tahoe. Uh, just generally active out here, folks. Things are uh, set in motion. Also, if you look down here, look at this. We haven't seen this in a little while. There's some earthquake activity right on the San Andreas Fault here. Well, just off of the San Andreas Fault, I should say, on these little um, sections that stream over here on the North American side of the plate boundary. You really don't see that too often out here. So we're starting to see a little bit of migrational stress here just off the plate boundary so be prepared folks I, I, nobody knows when it's going to happen uh, all i know is this elevated event uh, sequence that we're seeing here in the last couple months remains it hasn't gone away we got more fours uh this year than any time since uh 1986 so that should tell you something uh, Northern California, fairly quiet up there. Cascadia subduction zone, nothing major going on. Uh, let's check out the trimmer tonight here. Cascadia trimmer. 134 epicenters again. Roughly around the uh, central coast of Oregon. A little bit down in Northern California as well. So getting a, a little bit of a pattern change here in terms of the trimmer uptick. Most of the uh, data here from the last week probably could go back oh, I don't think it's but we could go back the last month or so most of that earthquake or uh, trimmer activity has been confined up here across the central coast of Oregon limited areas up north and uh, down south here so just starting to you know fill in catch up a little bit because this region has not seen uh, uh, too much uh, trimmer activity lately so it's filling in All right, uh, yeah, look at all these earthquakes here. Goodness, just rocking and rolling out here. Let's see what we've got here for the largest magnitude out here. We've seen uh, one, two, three, five, 5 5.0 earthquakes. And goodness, about 10 or 15, maybe even 20 earthquakes. Uh, fours out there, including Southern California. It's just been quite active. Iceland seen a, a 5.1 earthquake out around that uh, rift boundary out here. 
New Zealand catching up on some earthquake activity as well. 4.7 following that 5.7 from yesterday. This earthquake striking this morning. And it looks like there's a, a handful of other quakes in the vicinity there of North Island. It looks like a, a little swarm kicking up there around that region. So continue to watch that. Kermadec tr Trench here showing some elevated activity as well. But goodness, it's, it's uh, a lot busier than I've seen out here recently. Out across the southeast uh, Pacific here, a divergent zone, East Pacific rise. This is on the fracture zone, Garrett fracture zone. Now that earthquake activity is separation of the uh, the plates here, the oceanic crust slowly, obviously. That should apply further strain out here against the Peru-Chile Trench. Right now there's not a whole lot going on. 4.4 from earlier this afternoon. And uh, maybe a couple smaller quakes out there kicking up right now. 2.5 in that area. All right, let's see what we got uh, for Yellowstone here real quick. Anything major going on out there across Yellowstone? That's all we need is to wake up a super volcano, right? Well, we would know when it's starting to come out of its slumber there. It's, right now, there's nothing going on. Maybe a handful of smaller earthquakes out here. Um, but that's about it. These look like, uh, I don't know, was there thunderstorms out there earlier today? You can tell when the winds when the wind picks up here, it's a pretty consistent level. But this looks like I don't know what. Let me see what we got here. I can go back and we'll ch chat about uh, space weather activity here in just a minute. The auroras finally came through for some out there. Um, up here in Yellowstone, I want to see what we got here in the last six. I don't think we had any thunderstorm activity out there. Just want to double check up here and see what all that noise is on the uh, seismos. Yeah, nothing. Could it could it have been wind? Maybe some wind gusts. Let's see what that is. Well, it looks. Uh, it's 10 p.m. So about 4 p.m. I guess it is. It was some wind up there. Maybe a little choppy um, around the Yellowstone area. But really, nothing major going on there. No. Uh, Really no earthquake activity to chat about here. A couple, again, a couple smaller ones here, it looks like, around Mary Lake. But uh, aside from that, what is that noise? I feel like a little noise going over my house. Um, so, yeah, space weather activity. Let's get back on that real quick. Goodness. Uh, so, uh, got a little bit of space, space weather activity. KP index up around the 5.5, almost the 6 range here. Um, earlier this evening. Things have since calmed down here, but uh, that allowed for uh, a little bit of amplification there for the auroras. Now, it looks like this may be uh, some of the residual CME activity that was originally supposed to hit us um, last night. Maybe a couple nights ago, too, we had some that missed us. This looks like just some residual uh, plasma that was out there. And uh, allowed for a little bit of amplification there on the auroras. Um, but again, it's since calmed down here. I know a lot of folks out there uh, in the northern tier states were talking about a brilliant red colored auroras up there in the, uh, the skies above them. Pretty neat. Flaring activity, well... Still elevated here, about 30% chance for X flare, M flare at 75, C flare around 99% chance or so. And looking at the magnetogram image here, still got this area. Got to watch that. Although here in a couple days, that's going to be way out here on the western limb, uh, no longer geo effective. But right now, it's still looking a little fancy right there. Uh, also, this area and a newer region behind that uh, is our main concern. Really not. Uh, looking at this too much right now because it's got a, a clear separation here of the magnetic core this one's jumbled up here with a lot of uh, different complexity there and that's capable there this area is capable of producing uh, looks like maybe an x flare we'll have to watch that as it's uh starting to turn into the earth directed view All right, um, yeah, hurricane activity here, folks. 
That's a, another one. I think it's getting close to Category 2 already. Milton, where are you? Let's go see here. Current storms. Right here. Here's the uh, latest infrared image here. Oh, look at that eye. It's already getting goodness. Already starting to get a uh, developing eye on that hurricane, which is currently uh, 90 mile per hour sustained winds here. Now, it is expected to make it into a major category, potentially four. It's a model showing five as it makes its way there towards the Tampa, Florida area. This is going to rapidly develop and head off in this general direction. Uh, hurricane watches down here in Mexico and a, a tropical storm warning in effect. But uh, they're already evacuating areas out here across the western area of Florida. That's pretty wise because uh, this thing is going to be a monster when it comes in. There is the predict predicted model intensity guidance here. A lot, a lot of those shown up in the uh, category four here. One up in the category five. Um, you know, the average here looks like strong category three, lower, lower grade four. Nobody knows specifically how long or how strong it's going to be. We'll just have to watch this pretty closely. And it is expected to make landfall there, it looks like, around uh, sometime during the day on on uh, Wednesday. So time is getting short. Don't wait till that day. Make sure you guys get out of there if, if uh, you're in that region because it's going to be a dandy. Let's see what the GFS models are showing here. Rapid strengthening, tightening. And um, this one here has a little bit more northward track on it for the GFS model here. That's all we need, right? We really don't want any more rain out there across the Carolina area. But uh, I don't think Florida wants any more rain either. That's going to be a rainmaker, though. And a storm surge. So we'll watch that. We'll definitely check back on it. And then uh, let's see what we got for any major pattern change out here across California. We've just been dealing with this heat, man. It was 104 degrees today. Again, it's just, it's yucky weather. I'm not a big fan of this heat. So October 6th, high pressure out here across the West Coast. So as we start the week there, it's going to remain in place out here across uh, the West and up into Canada. Cooler weather dipping down here across the Northeast. A little taste of fall coming for those folks there in the Northeastern states. A little low pressure clipper right here. All this is going to do is bring rain showers up here to uh, Oregon and Washington. Maybe some average temperatures here for California for once. Whoop de doo. <laughs> I need me some rain. And then look what builds back behind that. Massive high pressure ridge up here. Luckily, it's not over here across the West Coast, but we're still going to be influenced up in it. And that's around the 15th of October. After that, uh, it just, man can't get rid of these high pressure patterns out here hopefully uh hopefully uh we get some fall like weather out here in northern california all right chatsworth fault yeah it's just various areas out here seeing some increasing movement here today not just one area it's an overall pattern that's starting to sink in out here again across nevada across the garlock fault shear zone some more noticeable quakes here within this land chunk here, this massive uh, land area with the Garlock Fault Shear Zone and the San Andreas Fault here. So uh, just be on guard, folks. Busy day out here. Goodness. Hawaii, uh, a little bit of activity off the west coast here. 2.6 coming in about seven miles deep or so nothing major going on here across the Kilauea volcano for now and uh, of course Alaska a couple of earthquakes here this morning four range since then uh, things have tapered off a little bit here across the Aleutian Trench but now we got a little swarm going on way up north here way up into the uh, tundra area up around the north slope all right I'm out of here, folks. I am done. I'm pretty much well cooked, ready for bed. So have a good night. We'll catch you guys out here tomorrow, Monday. And um, just be prepared, folks. What do we got coming in? Another 1.4.
Indonesia's offline, but uh, we'll see if they come back or not. Hopefully they will in terms of their data. All right. Have a good night, folks. We'll catch you guys back out here in the morning sometime. Peace out.